85 years ago, a research group from Harvard University began the longest ever study of its kind to answer one simple question. What does it take to live a healthy and happy life? What is it that leads to satisfaction and fulfillment? What is the secret to a life well lived? For over eight decades, researchers observed hundreds of people, watching them grow up, start careers, have families, and experience the ups and downs of life. And recently, the results of this Harvard study of adult development were released. And what they found was fascinating, that the key to a fulfilling life was not career achievement, not financial success, not avoiding personal tragedy, not even physical health, exercise, or diet, but rather the quality of their relationships with other people. More than any other factor, positive relationships, living in community, helped people live happier and healthier lives. Now, compare that to the world in which we live today. Recent studies show that over 35% of people in the U.S. describe themselves as lonely, including 61% of young adults and over half of moms with young kids. People in our country today spend less time together and have fewer meaningful relationships than ever before. In fact, the number of people who claim to have zero close friends has quadrupled in the last 30 years. For many of us, this is the tension that we live in, where we agree with what the scripture teaches, that it is not good to be alone, where it's so clear that we've been created by a relational God to be in relationship with others, where we have more tools and technology to connect with other people than ever before. And yet, we live in a world that seems to be lonelier than ever. Today, I want to talk to you about God's solution to loneliness. Community. Living in relationship with others, not just to make us happier, but also to make us holier. As we ask ourselves, what does it mean to follow Jesus? To do that, let me just read for you one verse from the book of Acts. This is Acts 2, verse 42. It says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Now, this is a description of the first church, the earliest followers of Jesus, and notice a few things with me today. Notice first that word devoted, that these first disciples were devoted to their relationship with God, to the teaching of God's word and to the time of prayer, both things that we've looked at so far in this devotional series. But notice this too, that they weren't just devoted to their relationship with God, they were devoted to each other to the fellowship, the breaking of bread, this community that they were living in. We're told a few verses later that they had everything in common, that if someone had a need, they would meet it, that they shared life every day together. This is the example, the picture that we're given of true, authentic Christian community, a group of people devoted to God and devoted to each other. Here's the principle that I want to share with you today. Community is not something that is found. Community is something that is built. So often in my role here at Chapel Street, I hear this, and I've said the same thing myself, that I just haven't found my community yet. I wish I had it. I agree that it would make my life better. I agree that it's a good thing. I know I've been created for relationship, but I'm just so busy, and there's so much going on, and I just don't know how to find it. And I get it, it can be difficult and vulnerable to take that first step, especially for those who've taken it before and experienced pain or rejection or hurt. But remember what our verse says, that they were devoted, committed, dedicated, not just to growing in their relationship with God, but in their relationships with each other as well. That they ate, worshiped, served, shared, that they truly lived their lives together. And this is the invitation that God gives to us today. That this is what community was always meant to look like. A group of people with different backgrounds and different, different family situations, different capacities and abilities and strengths. United, caring for each other, bearing each other's burdens. A true church family. Friends, this type of community is not something you're just going to stumble upon one day. Community is not something that is found, it is something that is built. And this is my hope for you and for me today, that we would be people absolutely devoted. First, to growing in our knowledge and love of God, and second, to the good of those around us. That we would be people that do not wait for community to find us, but rather we go and build it. We go and start it. We go and take that first step. 
so often, and at least for me, when I think of community, I think of joining a Bible study or a life group or a, a men's group, and I'd love for you to do that. In fact, you can sign up at the link below if you'd like. But it's more than that, isn't it? And so today, whatever your day looks like and wherever it's going to take you, let me just invite you to take one small step of community building. It could be as simple as sending a text or, or giving a call to a friend you haven't heard from in a while. It could be as big as inviting a neighbor over for the first time, as scary as asking a coworker if you can pray for them. It is not good for man to be alone. Let us be people that bring friendship and community back into our world today.